Uh, who is all 50K? Most of them are 50K. Most of them are 50K. Yeah. 50K. Yeah. 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 Relay then. Let's do it that way. Okay. How many first first year for the relay? Okay. So, so first time 50K. <laughs> A lot. First time anything over a marathon is actually all this Okay. So I'll kind of just give you a brief overview. Um, we're with obviously the Nebraska Orthopedic Hospital, and we together as three are our Optimum Stride Running Program. Um, our main thing is we treat runners, evaluate mm -hmm. runners. Um, kind of have a passion for that, and that's how we came together to form our group of Optimum Stride. We um, are involved in the community, well, Mark's Market and Leprechaun Chase, um, our main two areas. And the Omaha Marathon. Um, we do weekly running, what we call running screens, or brief running evaluations at Shields once a month. We just talk for team and training, and then um, kind of wherever we get requested to help. Um, I know Leprechaun Chase this year, we had a big success with our running evaluations. There was a huge line. Make sure we don't have a little more time. But um, kind of a brief history on each of us. I'm Angie Peterson. I'm more of your recreational runner <laughs> of the group, so I'll be doing the relay. Um, I ran in high school and then just continued on um, independently as a recreational runner. Since then, my most that I run is a half marathon. So. <laughs> and mostly that's because of time, though. Mm -hmm. Family and job. Mm -hmm. So, um, I'm Christine Nielsen. Uh, so, been with Nebraska Community Hospital for almost oh, nine and a half years. My big thing is, so I've done 40 marathons, a 50 miler. I've done three Olympic trials in a marathon. Um, so, I ran through high school a little bit in college, and now I run and treat other crazy people. <laughs> Hi, I'm Elisa Bocat. Um, I'm a local girl. Um, I'm kind of the sprinter of the group in some ways. I was an 800 meter runner in high school and college. We all get older and slower, and so I've converted to half marathons. I've run one full um, and have done market to market three years. I think one year I was pregnant, so I did not do it that year. But I'm the same. Yeah, three years. <laughs> 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 that was not very excuse, right? No, not, no. And this year I will be in. Yeah, <laughs> so, and we're all slated to run. Yeah, us two relays and Christy is going to run the 50k. So, so the point is, is that we've all been there and and done that. So it's kind of a nice thing about coming to people who will not say don't run because it hurts. We want to get you better and get you back. So we will do everything to try to keep you running. Please use this as a resource. Please let other people know that this is out there for them. Um, we will answer emails, phone calls, you know, we're in the clinic the majority of the time, but we also do some community stuff. So please find us if you need help or if you need anything. Okay. We kind of structured this a little bit on starting with some helpful tips, tips for those people that have never participated in market to market, whether it be the relay or the 50K. Um, we started out with some basic stuff, went into some training stuff, kind of some race day preparation, and then some post-race stuff. Very informal, so if anybody has any questions, please just let us know. I guess that's one thing. For the people who are doing the 50K, how many of you have not been on the market to market course? A lot okay. of that's Okay, it. so yeah. that is a little more. Okay. Okay. So um, this first slide just talks a little bit about um, helpful tips, basically. And we'll go to, we actually have the market to market website pulled up that we'll go over with you and kind of how they, you probably have all been on there already, but how they lay out the routes and um, the exchanges and that sort of thing. But some just helpful tips, know the, the length of your runs, the elevation and the terrain, especially when you're starting to think about your training and how much time commitment it's going to take. Um, especially for those of you running the relay, it's different than running the 50K because you're gonna run, you're gonna stop for a while, then you're gonna run again, and then possibly run again. So, um, and we'll touch on that a little bit later on how to actually train accordingly. Um, and then transportation too, some things to think ahead, which I know they'll start sending out emails about vans and that sort of thing, but um, definitely vehicles. If you're not an elite team, <laughs> one vehicle is sufficient as long as you can fit all of your runners in it for exchange points. But for um, those that um, are quicker, they might require two vehicles, like Christie's team always had to have two because three miles for them doesn't take very long, so a van really can't 
can barely drive from one exchange point to the next before they already need the exchange runners. So. The website will tell you guys this, but something to know for the realizing, realizing the first time, the leg ratings, 90% is going to be based on the elevation and the surface that you're running on. 10% is based on the distance. So when they rate the legs as easy, easy, medium, 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 hard, and hard, take into account that that's elevation, terrain, and length. So just because it's a shorter leg does not necessarily mean it's an easier leg. It depends on the terrain and kind of some of the hills. Because I'm definitely the person that give me the miles and let me run them and keep me away from the hills because I'd rather just give me two extra miles than go up and down like this for three or four. So just really, when you, you know, we've, I know we had some questions on that. How do, you, how do you place your runners where? Well, some of that is their training and what they prefer to run. So. And I would say the majority of the relays, it's a full day event. So plan on being there for, you're in and out of the vehicle for a long time. I think our group is an average group and we've started, oh, it's been a good, what, 12 hours most times? Last, no, 10? 10. 10. 10. 10. So 10. Last year was a little shorter, too. Mm -hmm. What, six miles shorter? Yeah, so, yeah. And the same this year, so it's the, so the same, 78 so it's miles. Yeah. Yeah. If you're wondering, is that still considered market to market? Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but it's an all day event, so plan on being for an all day event. Um, <laughs> we threw some stuff in here. So whether you want to dress it as if, as if it's 10 degrees warmer than the temperature on the thermometer, um, it gets warm out there when it's sunny, but there have been years that we have had snow and ice. So you need to be prepared for all types of weather. Um, for those people that are starting early and are going to be finishing late, you need some sort of reflective gear. And it's not a bad idea to have a headlight for some light. Some of the courses get pretty dark, and it depends on where you're at when you're running. So that's something just for safety reasons that it's not a bad thing to have. Um, course safety, you need to be aware of the course markings. Please ask if you have questions. Um, traffic is always a huge consideration. There is a ton of vehicles and a ton of people. So be mindful that the cars may not see you. Um, they're trying to get to the next places. Just be careful with things. Make sure that you're watching cars and vehicles. But then I think that goes the other way too. The van, you know, whoever's driving, be be courteous of the runners too. You know, um, just because you're in a hurry to get somewhere, they're still right there running. I mean, a lot of times you cross paths. They have changed a little bit. I think. There's occasionally yeah. some time though where the path across the runners. So make sure that you're giving the runners leeway. Um, and then they ask that there's no headphones. So, you know, no iPods, some of that kind of stuff where you actually have to have headphones. And some of that is for everybody's safety. So if there is problems with traffic and everything else, you can hear a car coming. All right, so training. Um, first of all, for the relay trip teams, um, cover the distance and prepare for the total daily, um, daily mileage of the race. We've had people come in after the race and you know, they're coming in with an injury and we'd say, well, you know, how far were you to run that day? You know, oh, I had to do a total of eight miles. Well, how far did you train before that? Three miles. <laughs> well, but my legs were only three, three, you know, whatever. It doesn't work like that. This is a, a full day, a total day. I will tell you, I personally think, and I think you guys are doing, most of you would, the relay is harder. I mean, I, I would say when I've done like 13 miles, it's harder than a marathon. I mean, to me, the getting in, getting out, um, much more difficult than just running it straight through. <laughs> um, so prepare for the for the distance um, and time as well. A lot of people ask about, you know, should I run two a days? The hard thing is it's hard to mimic your race day easy because I'm I mean I've done two a days for years, but I never get up in the morning, go run as hard as I can, go sit down for three hours without really eating or drinking any real food, and then go out and run as hard as I can again for four or five miles. All right, but. Going and going for a run in the morning for a few miles, going to work, and then getting off work, and maybe just going for one or two miles, just easy jog. That's going to help you at least teach your body how to go when it's tired. All right, and that's the biggest thing about um, the relay is you get really tired by that second and third leg if you have to do it. So I think we talked about it too. You know, there's different depending on how many people are on your team. There's different amounts you may run from a relay perspective. So. I think majority of the, the legs are either going to be covered by training for a 10K or training kind of for a half marathon. So if you're upwards in the 10 to 13 mile range, you probably need to prepare like it's a half marathon. So at least your legs are used to running that amount of miles. It's not going to be the same because it's not continuous, but at least you know that you can run that amount and you've put that mileage in. Some of the shorter legs probably you could train like it were a 10K. And that is also going to go along kind of with the next step of the 50K. But 
your food during that day. Um, I know the first year we just took snacks. We were like, oh, I don't want to have anything that's going to sit in my stomach. Probably the worst thing you'd possibly do, because then you made it through, you know, eight hours of running and sitting in the car with no real food. You know, you're still sitting there for eight hours if you're only doing 13 miles versus whatever, or eight miles, it doesn't matter. Um, you need to have some real food in there. And you have enough time. You have three hours minimum between the stations. Um, okay, so for 50K runners, um, we have some of this written down. Um, there will be eight aid stations for the 50K runners. This is all on their website, so you know, but just in case you haven't looked at it. Um, 3.1 to 4.3 miles apart. Each station will have a water refill, sports drink, bananas, oranges, pretzels, potato chips, crackers, and other fun surprises. <laughs> so, do not rely on the aid stations. You guys got to think, those of you who have done marathons, this is completely different. You're not going to have somebody handing you your water that you can grab. You're not going to have, you're not going to have that. And you need to prepare for going longer, basically, um, than the marathon. Have stuff on you. Get used to carrying stuff on you. Probably the hardest thing, carrying a water bottle. You think it's not a big deal, go out for one of your long runs and see how it feels. It's not. I, I don't like it. Most people don't like it. Um, have a bottle that you can open it up and fill it, because they'll have those aid stations. Instead of having to always change a bottle, have a bottle that you can open up, put whatever you want in it. If you have certain sports drinks or something, have them in a packet on you that you can um, put that um, powder in to drink. Have whatever kind of stuff that you want to be taking during the course on you. Um, they do have one drop bag. Um, it will be, in, but can go in there, but can fit in a one-gallon bag, and it will be provided at mile 21. Okay. Some people want to change their shoes. If, if we know, let's say we know it's going to be pouring down rain, and you think you're going to want to have shoes and socks or change of shirt, change of something, that stuff can go in there. Um, any blister kits, socks, like I said, um, and then any other food changes that you need to have at that halfway point is a good thing to put in there. And start practicing with this stuff now. Um, because again, it's going to be a longer time. You have to see how your body's going to react to those things out there. Um, Practice running the fluids, um, be clear on the fueling stations, uh, be prepared to carry the majority of your fuel. Again, don't depend on anything because you never know what's going to be their race day, all the things that can happen. These guys never do anything wrong and it's always perfect, but <laughs> <laughs> you never know. Um, I might be there before you and I might eat all the food. So <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I was going to say after the first year we had them porta potties. Yes. Well, in your race you might not. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I do get back onto the distance more. Yeah, and then we'll go back to the questions. Um, yes. All right, so um, preparing for hills and such. Um, you guys, how many miles are we on the gravel road before we get to the it's trail? It's about two miles, that's I would it. say. Okay. And so it's pretty. That's the, those rocks are really big on that side. Yeah. Really big rock. Can you have them drive over a lot of time? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, that's my job. Okay, please do that. I'm going to drive back and down. You know what will happen? You'll do that the day before, and then that night they'll put more gravel down. Um, so prepare for the hills. Um, that's the first part. And get out and try to run on some gravel roads, like the big crushed limestone. It is tough. You don't think it's a big deal? It is. Um, also going on like a limestone trail, like Mopac or Wabash. Um, a lot of your runs going to be on that, but you're also going to have the end of your run on pavement. So you really need to train your body to be on all that and to respond to that stuff when you're tired. Um, the good thing is, is the hills are at the beginning, thank goodness. Um, and again, prepare for the varying weather conditions. Um, we're all praying for cold. I sent Ben an email the other day and said, so do we get to start early if it's really hot? And his answer was, Ultras are supposed to be hard. I hope it's 85. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, one of the coolest things I think yeah. about how we're starting the ultra is, you know, most ultras are really solo pursuits. Um, and because we're kind of embedding it in the relay, as you guys make it closer and closer to Lincoln, you guys are just going to get more and more support and encouragement and cheers from all the relay runners. So just think about as you get closer, 3,000 people are going to be engulfing you guys at each exchange point and saying, you can do it, way to go. Like they are gonna be excited for you and that's just gonna lift you up. So I think that's gonna make it one of the coolest ultras around. I agree. Yep. Um are they gonna be running and going, Yeah, see if it finishes Yeah. Um
Um, again, um, fine foods that are, eat, are easy to eat between stages, um, protein and carbs, such as peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, a great, easy thing to keep, you know, do. Um, even we did, like, turkey sandwiches, just, it's a very simple, easy thing. Yeah. Um, animal crackers, um, Twizzlers, gummy bears. Um, I, I will still have, like, if I'm going to have a soda, I'll have a soda drink. I mean, still do your normal daily things that you would do. Um, hydrate, um, water and sports drinks. Um, the big thing, and this is for anybody, everybody, re replenish within the 15, 15 to 30 minutes of your, when you're done with your leg. That's the most important time, time to get your sugars in. Okay, this is, should be common knowledge for any runners. 15 minutes, get your stuff in. Most important time for those sugars. Um, and it's gonna help you get those um, glycogen stores back up for you to go out and do it again. The relay people, obviously you guys are on this team with people, so talk to your teammates. We usually yeah. stock a cooler. You have one vehicle with six to eight people in it and everybody's changed the clothes and everything else. So probably best to kind of get together and decide what you guys are gonna want for eat, drink, all and that kind really of stuff. it's really good if you say, you take the, the team captain and you say, okay, you know, if you wanna do peanut butter and jelly sandwich, so-and-so, you're bringing the bread, you're bringing the peanut butter and jelly, you're bringing the water, kinda helps out that way. It's hard to have everybody have a cooler of exactly what, I mean, it's just, it's time and space. Yeah, for motivation. Yeah, we did, you know, drinks in one big cooler and then try to do fruit and you know, whatever else people independently brought and another just to save space. Uh, clothing, change of clothing. Again, you guys, for after the race, I don't know how many times I've had to tell people this, even in marathons, bring clothes to put on afterward. Females, sports bras, shorts, shoes, socks, guys, shorts, a sweatshirt. I mean, it may be hot the whole time we're running, it may be cold after and vice versa. Bring stuff with you. You do not want to go to the after party and have, you know, anything wet on. So bring other stuff with you. Um, and the weather conditions have been such that it's been pretty oh, warm or it's been kind of snowy and wet. So there was definitely a need, regardless of the weather, to have some change of clothes. Most of us kind of did a quick change in the van before we did a second leg or third leg of the real leg, just because it's more comfortable and nobody wants to sit in wet clothes for 12 hours and nobody wants to smell you in your wet clothes for 12 hours in a van either. Um, body glide, Vaseline, for shaping, you know, and start training with that stuff now as well. Um, wear sunscreen and a hat with sunny, it's kind of a known fact that if you wear a white visor, um, white hat, the visor would be obviously nicer, except for those bald people out there, and <clears throat> they might want a hat. Just, it, it takes like 10 to 15 percent of your um, effort off by having something like that on you. Um, yeah. Have you guys all been to the website to look at stuff very closely? Um, I would recommend definitely kind of scouring through that before two days before the race. It has a plethora of information. Um, they will show you routes, there's discussion about exchange points, and some of that stuff is nice to have an idea, especially those people that are running relays, what your legs are, where the exchange points are, so that when you're getting there, you're not scrambling around and trying to figure it out and kind of read as you go. Um, we always use a navigator in the car, so we have a driver, and sometimes we'll switch, and we have one person that's doing the navigation, because there's a ton of traffic, and so it's nice to have somebody that's telling you where to turn and where to go, for and there's reasons. people that go the wrong way, so it's not always good to follow the person ahead of you because it <laughs> does happen. Um, I think the big thing, the bathroom breaks as far as the relay stuff goes. Don't wait till the leg before your leg, or don't think you're going to get out of the car and have time to go to the bathroom and then run right away. It doesn't happen that way. So start to think about some of that stuff. I think probably two to three legs, uh, two legs. Well, before. we always plan it too. You know, you have to watch people's legs because if it's a three miler, you don't have a lot of time to sit and wait in a line at a bathroom. You know, whereas if somebody's running five and a half, you've got a little more time to wait in line, go, and then so and there's still catch up with them before. So yeah, there's some strategy is. with getting to the next exchange point, making sure your runner is ready, and making sure that everybody's in the vehicle ready to go before you take off again. But the website is pretty awesome as far as giving you kind of course stuff and all of that map stuff and everything. If you have not been there, it's a good place to look at that stuff, and I recommend doing it. And then our packet, you'll, I assume you'll still get the the folder with yeah, or the, the get, pamphlet, I should call it, the book, the book thank you, with, guy. I mean, and it gives, goes over every exchange point, w driving directions, I mean, everything to the team for the most part, so. Um, 
So website does a pretty nice job. Um, as you look at kind of this detail slide, this was the one that we spent a lot of time on, but it will break it down as far as course, stages, descriptions of each stage. Um, it's giving you the difficulty that we talked about before. Um, you can look down here and it's giving you the distance and it's rating that. Be aware that the ratings are also based on the elevation and the terrain. It gives you your exchange point, gives you the surface. It's it's pretty darn thorough. So it's a nice thing to look through and kind of get acquainted with before you're actually doing it. Yeah, and it breaks it down into the seven. Yeah, we've got eight person teams, seven also. person teams. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Intervention. You want to get out of the vehicle frequently, so even though you may not be running the next leg, get out as often as you can, stretch, you know, try as much as you can to warm up and cool down. We talked about clothing changes and eating and all that stuff, and that helps with injury prevention too. Um, packing ice and bringing some sort of medication, <coughs> ibuprofen, that kind of stuff is not a bad idea either. So if somebody does get injured, you have something um, to try to help that during the race. And there are all of, there are you know some of the periods you pass gas stations and that sort of thing too, where you do have some options of like you know post race day recovery um you're you're sore I mean relay stuff it's a different race than what people are used to running if it's if you're in and out of the car frequently so you know it's the standard stuff rest ice you know compress elevate especially if there's been an injury. Stretch, I think rehydrating is the big thing, making sure you're eating and drinking. Um, and, you know, we're here as a resource, so please use us if there's something that's going on that's not getting better or there's an injury that's not getting better. Do you want to tackle questions that we have through? Okay, well, and Chrissy said no hot dogs. Um, so, for some of our questions for the 50K, a big thing um, <coughs> was just how to train for it. Another question, is there anybody here who's doing the 50K that has not done a marathon? Okay, a couple. Um, have you done halves? Alright, um, so the big questions were, um, first of all, creative ways for the long runs in this heat. Get up early. Um, back to back, back versus one one long run. Back to backs are fine, honestly. Um, but the, a lot of times this stuff is hard to address because we have such an array of people here. I'm sure we have some people that run 20 miles a week, and we have some people who run maybe run 100 miles a week. So it's hard to just say this is how many miles you need to run a week, and this is how many miles you need to get done before the race. Um, think about your time. How long do you think you are going to be out there? If you're somebody who you think it's going to take seven hours, do I expect you on Saturday morning to go out and do seven hours of running? No. Um, but what would work is going out and doing, you know, three to four hours on Saturday and then getting out on tired legs and doing a couple hours again, okay? That way you're not dealing with the heat as much and you're still dealing with tired legs. Everybody in here knows how to run. Now you just have to teach your body how to go longer. Um, so that's a great way to do that. Um, I have brought this in for people to see is, um, one of the big things I've done the past couple of summers was looking up um, paces in the heat. So the big thing is slow down on your training runs. Don't expect to go out there and run the same pace that you normally run. And people are, well, if I run that slow all summer, I'm going to do that slow. Not true. Um, your heart can only work so hard. So if you're out there running and your normal easy day, heart rate's 130, 
and you're also doing 175, which is your tempo run, you can't go, be able to do that for two hours or three hours. I don't, you know, it doesn't matter if it's the same pace, your heart cannot do that. I mean, this talks about, now again, I know none of us do this, but um, if it's 80 to 85 degrees, which pretty much every day has been that for how long? If it's over 60% humidity, okay, every day, um, you're supposed to slow your pace down three minutes per mile. Uh, okay, so do any of us do that? Probably not. But what that means is you go out there, and I mean, I've seen this happen with, with lots of people. You're doing the first lap, oh, you know, Fred Zorinsky, you're doing two, three laps. First lap, oh, this isn't bad, you know, maybe 15 seconds slower. You get to the second, third lap, and you're like, oh, gee, why do I feel so horrible? Oh, my God, I'm so out of shape. Well, because you're running, your heart at a rate that it, it can't do. So, point is, slow down in the heat. Don't worry about your pace. It's all going to work out. In the heat, um, I walk. You know what, if your body gets hot, there's nothing you can do about cooling it down. Unless you can stop at every water station you can, put water on, you know, and that's what I do. I, I mean, that's why I do Zerensky a lot in Chalco, is so I can go and ever, under every water stop, put water on me, and then I'm cool for about a mile and a half, and then it's back to trying to get some water again. Um, so that would be my thing with that. Is if you're wanting to do just a long run, you know, you think, um, for a marathon, I never really recommend running 26. Um, I say you can do just fine off of 21, 22, um, as long as you're putting the miles in during the week. So you're thinking basically 26 should be probably sufficient for a 31 miler. I honestly, I don't think anybody in here would not be fine doing that. Or doing it the other way of breaking up kind of two runs. And sometimes I've, I've been finding that's probably more important. Or doing a run in the morning and going out for a few miles at night. Again, teaching your body to go when it's tired. That's, that's what this is about. Um, People had asked about um, gravel and pavement. Again, get some training on both because you're going to have to. And um, gravel, pavement, and you know, like mopac conditions. Um, water versus carbs, <coughs> and how much you should take in. Again, this is something. And if I told you what you were supposed to do, not a single person would do it because it's a lot of work. Um, I worked with a nutritionist a few years ago, and for me, in a marathon, I was supposed to take in basically the equivalent of two cliff blocks every 12 minutes okay so and, and I remember people were in the room going well, who's going to do that well guess what I bet you every single person in the Olympics is doing that you know not that you're going to be an Olympic athlete but do to be the best that you should be you really have to keep your cards up that much um this lady is actually she's in a runner's role a lot Deborah Shulman she's out of Fort Collins Colorado I mean she will tell you how to be the best that you can be and it's a lot more than any of us any of us do um, so you want to get your sugars in, and you want to, don't start at mile 20. You honestly, you need to start taking 20 minutes into the race. She would tell you, um, this is kind of what I practice, get your food in two hours before your race. So your carbs, some protein. Two hours before your race, get your coffee down, if you're having coffee, and all your food. Done. Hour and a half is the, the least amount of time you would still be eating or drinking coffee. You can have your water after that. Um, then nothing else. Don't be slamming down a gel before you go run. Nothing. You get about 20 to 25 minutes into your race, that's when you start taking your sugars. And then from that, so we can calm it down a little bit, say every 20 to 25 minutes you should be taking in some sugars. So, um, and you might think I don't need that. Yeah, you do. You do. We all do. Um, and then you might want to think about salt tabs. Um, when do you guys usually start taking? These guys have done Billions of ultras, so if it's hot. We'll take them every, one every half hour. Okay. Actually. And I was trained. I, I did it a couple weeks ago. I took one. I just took one in every hour, which I, I was fine just because I it was the first time I was kind of using it. But yeah, so that might be something you want to carry on you. But you want to start practicing with that now. Um, what brand do you guys use? DBM Endurance. Okay. Where do you guys S caps. S caps is a big one that people hear about. Endurance. Endurance. That's what I have. Um. Your your don't have salt. Salt. salt, yeah. yeah so if you're a big sweater, you probably want to go to what they have. They just know that. So Endura Lights, if you're not, you know, and yeah, sometimes people just don't need to sweat as much or don't sweat as much, so you can do it like the Endura Lights, but that's a step higher. I didn't know that. So um, and you want to, you guys want to practice with that because you don't want to put sodium into your body if your body doesn't need it. I mean, you can have a, a not good reaction to that. Yeah. I think a lot of people don't think either that that actually will help your stomach. If you get an upset yes. stomach, it's usually because you're taking too much sugar. And, and not enough. If you take a salt things. pill, sometimes yeah. that will help calm your stomach. Um, that was another big thing I wanted to hit on. Um, Dr. Shulman, her big thing was, so you're out there, and you've been taking your, your sugars in every 20 minutes or whatever. 
and she's like, okay, if you start feeling nauseous, what's our first thing that we do when we get nauseous? I don't want anything. Worst possible thing you can do. And I know it's hard. I've seen it multiple times. Um, that's the best, that's the most important time to get something into you, to get some sugars, anything you can get in. So she said, if you start getting kind of in that la-la land, which we all know what that feels like out there, um, you're having a hard time focusing, you're starting to get some cramping, you're starting to feel like your legs are to cramp up, you need sugars or salts. You need to put something into your body. Immediate. Immediately, yeah, don't, yeah. So that's why you want to have it on you, because if you get it and your next aid station is four miles away and you've just taken some stuff and you're a mile out, you know, we're talking anywhere from, you know, 20 to 30 to 40 minutes before you get to that next aid station. You have to get something in. And if you're having a cramp, you might want to, like, every yeah, start putting it exactly. Yeah, and it will go away. I mean, I, I watch it. I watch people who are so sick they can't, you know, even think of putting anything in their bodies, and then, you know, in an ultra 25 miles later, they're absolutely fine and happy because they finally took their food in. Um, so think about that. Um, well, I was training when we talked about that. Um, any other questions along that line? First of all, question about the the salt stuff. Uh -huh. Never used it. Uh -huh. um, it, I've never actually even seen that for sale. Where do you get that stuff? Shields has it. Shields has it. They have Shields. Shields. They have their yeah. yeah, 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 and they have a whole section. The drugstore carries and wallets. They do. Okay. Yeah, carry on. Yeah, all stuff. So I mean, and she, yeah, yeah. Any of your bike places are going to have it, and then Shields. Or you can order them. You can order seed. Okay. Or hammer. Yeah, online. I mean, and Shields has. I was very impressed because usually they don't have everything. I went in there the other day, and it was yeah, they fully stocked. I was like, wow. So. Yeah, and again, start working with it now. And yeah, like you said, you, first I was like, I don't need this stuff. I'm not going to do this. I did it for one of mine. It, I mean, I definitely think it works. And if it's going to be as warm as it has been the last few years, you're going to want to have it. Did you only use those for races, or did you live? Oh, train when you do long Oh, yeah, runs? every long run now, especially in these. This What's kind of anything thing. over 10 miles, or how far? What's a long run? Well, that's the whole thing. Depending on time, as I'd say probably over anything over an hour is probably what I'd start, because then you could at least be practicing it and getting it in. So yeah. But uh, some gel packets have caffeine, so don't have caffeine. What See what your body does. There's no way I could take a caffeine packet, of, and I can drink a soda, but if I take the gel with caffeine, it doesn't sit well. Um, so your stomach doesn't sit yes. well. Yes. So practice. You have to practice. Um, you know, they will tell you, I mean, some really good long distance runners, they'll tell you that they will actually have, like, if they have their special bottles, they put um, Coke in it that's been defissed. Mm -hmm. That's pure caffeine. It helps you go, but see if your body can handle it. So, that's again, just, you've got to practice. I literally will be out on my run right now, and I will drink a can of Pit Zero in my run because I like the caffeine, and it, it helps me. And it does calm your stomach at times, too. So, see what works for you. <laughs> We've done chocolate covered coffee beans too. Or chocolate covered bacon. <laughs> the things that you will want that day. And yeah, think of weird things. Go ahead. I got a question. On our team, uh -huh. the relay team, we have some people that are more experienced runners and some that are not. Uh -huh. um, you know, with the starting and stopping, I haven't done a relay before. Is it generally easier for someone to do maybe two legs, yes. but they're longer yes. versus? 100%. Okay. And usually the longer runs are going to be, like she had talked about, are going to be usually are easier. They're usually not as hilly most of the time. And they're all marked, but oh yeah, 100%. Getting out three times, no matter what the distance is, is, I think, much harder. Anybody who's done it will probably. Yeah, because I would say for the most part, our the ones on our team, we've had a big love. I mean, we have those that are running under sevens on our team, too. One of our runners that runs 11s. Minimize. And, yeah. So I mean, and but, she, but she only wants to run two legs. So she'll take the hills and run the longer, yeah. one of the shorters, but yet just because she doesn't want, she has no desire to do more. Some than. of it's personal preference. Yeah. I think overall we would tell you that two runs is easier than three runs out of the car, but you need to look at the elevation and some of that stuff too, mm -hmm. because some people will do really well on heels and others really like, would rather run an extra two miles and have a flat surface. But definitely getting in and out of the car less is going to be easier, I think. I think you've run three legs. I think every time I run, I run three legs. And that third leg is a little bit of a bear sometimes. I, I had the last leg last time. Um, it's, I mean, it's definitely, the two are okay, that third one is a little bit of a kicker sometimes. <laughs> 
sample relay, and you just really look over that, and you know, it'll come down to probably the last week that people will be like, oh, I don't know if I want to do this. And one just talk to your runners. Yeah. I mean, because they can give you a good idea. And they're all they... looking at the shorter distances. I want to. Yeah, and just really <laughs> telling, honestly. I will caution you, though. People tell you that Nebraska is flat. There are some pretty freaking good hills out there in that country. I mean, yes. it, it'll say rolling hills. They And it's out in the country, literally. It, I mean, there are gravel some, roads. There's some good and, hills out there. So be prepared if you're running a short distance. It does not mean that it's flat. We were looking through pictures from last year, and I have a good yeah. one of Elisa coming up a hill, and a car had just gone by, so it was all, dusty. you know, dusty. <laughs> and it, it was a pretty good hill she was having to come up. and. So there so, are some big, Some of those shorter runs, even if they appear like they're going to be shorter and easier, there's some hills out there, so be aware of that. So how's that crushed <laughs> limestone compared to like a gravel road? It's awesome. It, it, it's not going to be, it's, it's amazing. It can like, rain like crazy and you're not going to have mud. It can, as far as the texture of what you're running on, is it? I think the only thing I would caution is sometimes there's a stability issue. So if you're used to running on concrete and asphalt, it's smooth surface. Some of those gravel and limestone roads, it's very uneven, and so the footing is different well, the on that too. Mm -hmm. No, Mopac doesn't. But yeah. like some of the no, gravel, oh, roads, gravel roads, the gravel yes. roads, was, but the Mopac, yeah. And the one last year that you changed a little bit and you brought off the trail mm -hmm. to exchange. Oh, you ran through the grass. Uh, uh, and then, uh, he ran through this little trail to get. Oh, uh, eighteen. Sure. The, yeah. But the 50Kers won't have to do that. No. 50Kers are okay. <laughs> The relay, you get off this, the trail and you run through, it looks like a little horse path, actually, to get to the grass. And then once you hit the grass, and then when you hit the grass, it was, I mean. I was horrible. It was funny watching people run. You thought, I mean, you just, yeah, so you were having to work so much side to side, which usually, you know, you're running, and it's forward. And that's it. And this, I mean, it took a lot more stability, and that was harder. Like, and it was the end of your run, and all of your running was done. And we can tell people. I mean, like you guys go out and get on the floor and the gravel roads. Go get on. You know, we always go like on 192nd and you know Harrison area ish or 168th and Giles. Get on those roads, and you can see what that gravel like. Now the bad thing is, if you're out there and they put first put the gravel down, it's horrible. Two weeks later, they can go through it, and you can have a nice little lap, but you don't know what's going to be that day. And then go get on Mopac or Wabash and see what that's like and get some training on there. But yeah, the gravel roads are definitely difficult um, as far as footing. Mm -hmm. Very different than running on <coughs> We had a question here about the 50K and the, the overall, like how it breaks down. So um, basically the first two miles are on the gravel road out there and it's gonna be the hilly section. You'll start by Grandpa's Woods, uh, golf course and market there, and then do a little loop and get on something that's very similar to the Mopac here by Springfield. Um, it's actually the Mopac in Lincoln. So but it's, that section's not as well maintained as the rest as of it. So it's a little choppier. Yeah, it's a little choppier. So, it, so that's, that's crushed limestone, and you'll take crushed limestone then from mile two to mile, to about eight miles out, and then, then it'll be paved. From for the last eight miles, um, so you, it's very in terrain. Um, but the last eight will be paved. The middle, most of the middle section will be crushed, and then the first part will be uh, the, the gravel. The last ten miles are pretty much down, slightly downhill, with the exception of <laughs> there's some pedestrian bridges that you'll the have to cross. Bridges. So like Do right after you're most tired, you gotta go up this with this grade. You know, it's, it's only. <laughs> You swear it doesn't look yards. very long, oh, but it feels really long. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I think it's one of those things, no matter what you prepare for. Yeah. And you're bus to the, the big cares are bus to the yeah. start. start right? Yeah. So, so we drive to Lincoln. Yep. Okay. Um, you'll drive to Lincoln, and then uh, the Haymarket Park there, the baseball stadium, is where you'll you'll be, and then we'll bus you out to the starting line, uh, so that we can have you point to point. Uh, from there, and then your cars will be right there. So if you want to stick around and uh, at the the post race celebration area, you can. Or if you want to get out and leave, you, you can do that as well. Uh, the other question I had was about elevation. So elevation is on the website for the 50k. Uh, there's a lot of stuff on there, and we'll be getting you guys kind of a more comprehensive like guide uh, closer to race. But you know, just be aware on those elevation charts that we we use like Matt My Run or, or even Google. But you know they, they only have a certain amount of tangents on the line. So if we're looking at a 0.5 mile route, they have a thousand tangent points. If you're looking at a 31 mile route, they have a thousand tangent points. So it doesn't showcase the hills as much when the longer the distance. So um, 
But I mean, overall, this is a really, really flat, flat course. Yeah. I mean, it's on the old mm -hmm. railroad line, and yeah. they can't go above uh, a few percent grade on those. And, and you know, I've biked the course mm -hmm. a lot, and ran most legs, and, and overall, it's very flat. Yeah, the majority very, very of it flat. is flat. Mm -hmm. um, I guess something that I wanted to kind of ask, because I've had people ask, and I just from doing the relay, what do you think it'll be like as far as um, I know with the relay, you'd go into some of the aid stations or the station and the handoff, and it'd be kind of a cluster. Um, and it was even worrisome as a as a relay runner. Well, I know when we're at mile 20, whatever, and you're tired, and I mean, do you foresee that being a problem at all, coming through people? I mean, yeah, it's great that we're going to come through people, but then there's that part of, oh my gosh, at the stations where there's 10 teams and people are all standing there and don't want to get out of your way. I mean, do you foresee that being an issue? Uh, that's, a, that's a good question. I think, I mean, one thing that we, we want to do, we go out and uh, individually train all of our volunteer groups, and so we do our best to give them those updates, and that's one of the updates that we'll be making this year is, you know, how is this going to be different this year now that we have, uh, you know, an ultra marathon going on at the same time. Um, one thing that we're going to do is obviously the race bids for the 50k folks will be different, and they're going to be kind of like a bright yellow with black whereas the relay will be kind of green and white. Um, so everybody should be able to visually tell the bibs, and hopefully what we'll be saying to the volunteers is, you know, hey, as those 50 Kers are approaching, really make work to get to get people back, because that's, you're, you're right, that's, it's cool that there's a lot of people there, but, you know, 20 miles into it, you don't want to have to Well, I think the good thing is not being on, I mean, the gravel roads always seem to be also the, the hard part, you have some of the cars coming in, you really won't have to deal with that, which yeah. is, Mm -hmm. most, we're putting the aid stations, yeah. you know, they, they're not going to be like right on the road. They'll, most of the time they'll be uh, just, you'll run through the exchange point. And, and then have the aid station. And then we'll have an aid station like 50 yards down, okay. down the road. So it'll be a path for everybody. Yep, and that way uh, all the relay folks aren't trying to grab the gummy bears. Oh, we'll <laughs> take them out. I'm sure I'll <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we need to worry about that. Can you keep going? What's the uh, range of vehicles people use for the relays? Fans and Suburban. Fans, yeah. Suburban. Your biggest. I've seen a lot of people that have rented vehicles. We use the Suburban and it's tight, but it works. Mm -hmm. And we run with eight. We run with eight with the Suburban. Mm -hmm. So better like your companion than your Suburban. But it's really, I mean, the only, you always have one person out. So the only time it was really crowded is um, getting down driving down there with one just out on the floor. Mm -hmm. Probably isn't. Safest. <laughs> Safest, but but that was just I mean we're here in Omaha so we just you know drive to the starting point but then from there someone else or someone was always running so you only had seven and then um, once we got there it seems like somebody always with the fronts is left with someone else and so or they've had spouses or something waiting so mm -hmm. to ride back to them, Jason what's the start time for the 50k start time it, there's going to be two waves 11 and 11 45 and so obviously okay. you know not good. I mean, ideally, if you're just doing a 50K, you're starting it early in the morning. So, you know, this summer yeah. training in the heat will pay dividends when you're <laughs> out there running in the heat, because probably no matter how cold it is, it'll, it's going to feel, you know, pretty warm. Here's another thing with the training I was saying, like, right now there's time, I mean, I absolutely cannot stand the heat. Anybody who knows me you knows I fail miserably in heat, and I'll make myself get out there. And, yeah, if I have to stop and walk right now and get water and just try to get used to it, I'm not, you know, don't be stupid. I need to people out there that take nothing with them, and I'm going to run this pace no matter what. Just and are running in 105 and running feet 105 in the middle, middle of the day. Don't be smart about it. You know, <laughs> get your drinks, have stuff with you, slow your, you know, slow your pace down. But it is a good idea. You know, if, I, if you have friends that run at 5 o'clock every day, and then they're going to do a 50K, you better get out there in the heat at some point. So don't be stupid, but do, I mean, you're going to have a son. And a lot of people don't, you know, run in the middle of the day. How about ways? How many ways are you gonna have starting for the relay this year? Do you know yet? Uh, it's a lot. This year we're doing 20 minute waves. So we, this is the first year that we're doing. Okay. Um, the past I think we had four waves last year. Yeah. And this year we're gonna have like I think it's 10 waves and 12. Okay. So it'll be between five and uh, nine o'clock. So we're starting a little bit early. I was gonna say five nine? is earlier than last earlier. year, right? Six and. Uh, but that'll get everybody into Lincoln yeah. after, by 8 o'clock. Oh, which yeah. nice. What did you do? Did you do 45 minutes last year or was it half hour? Every 45 minutes. 45. What, what we're really working to do on the, I mean, it's really kind of dorky, but we're trying to keep the, the vehicle counts low. 
in the in the parking lots. And this year we have increased from 240 teams to 400 teams. And so what we've done to be able to accommodate that is um, really working with kind of those 20 minute intervals and then bumping the race back an hour. So. Yeah, so I mean, you're talking 400 teams, 400 vehicles, relay teams. Yeah, 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 relay teams have six to eight people. So whom we're talking about, bathroom breaks and strategy with that stuff. And there's a lot of people out there. So. The, the good thing is that the, because of how we're spreading it out, mm -hmm. like if you think about how we did it before, like we had a very compressed funnel, mm -hmm. but now we have a very wide funnel with less people going into that funnel at a time. Mm -hmm. So like the parking counts based upon our estimations of stores, um, crunching the numbers a bunch, uh, is that the, the traffic counts per exchange point should be a lot lower, oh, good. but it would just be yes. more consistent. More, uh, yeah. good. Um, and, and those of you who, I mean, who haven't done the relay, just know, I mean, I remember the first year we all sat, we did, my group was not very intelligent, That's, in fact, we got our last person at 6 o'clock the night before because the other person told us they were going to run the night before. Um, don't do that. Um, but. Uh, we thought, ah, we're not going to worry about this. Everybody's going to screw up. It's going to be a mess. It's not. <laughs> this thing runs so smoothly, it's not even funny. I was so going to say, it's a lot it of fun. You guys really okay, never The only time thing. I've ever heard was the, I, was the year of the snow, mm -hmm. yeah, where we had to change the course a little bit. And But it's a blast. I mean, it's, a, it's a great course. It's well put on. It's well run. It's you well organized. Lost. I mean, you will not well. Really, I probably shouldn't go back and lost. I don't know about this. No, it's it's a lot of fun. It's a great time. Yeah, great. We had an eight-person team, and we were like constantly eating, constantly going to the bathroom. Yeah, just exactly. And it was great. We felt like we had energy the whole time, whether we were doing two legs or three legs. But we had a plan pretty much. I don't know if it was a girl thing or a guy thing. But every time we get out of the vehicle, this is exchange, go to the bathroom. And I think, especially if you know it's going to be hot, plan above for water count. Because I know one year we ran out of Gatorade and water because we were stopping somewhere too, which we thought we had plenty. But it just happened that so the next few years we were a little smart. So you said about the start time for the 50 Kers, there was like a, a two different, two different, two different So is it like the slow people are going to start first, fast people are going to start second? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So it's based upon your estimate that you gave oh, okay. us, and we'll probably re-ask that question later on. And see how your training went, <laughs> because you know, oh, you, you know, I'm, I'm a real optimist, so I'm always like, yeah, I'm gonna do this in whatever time. And then we're staying home, you know. Just kidding. It, it changes, and uh, so as soon as the forecast comes out, we'll tell you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And just so he brought some preview. Have you all seen anything? Mm -hmm. Bottle opening. Uh, cool. <laughs> and if there's anybody really fast in the room, the. Uh, the prize that we're giving away for the winners, winners. Uh, so that's the finisher prize. We're giving away a growler this year, so it's going to be a, a beer growler with the logo on it. So it's handmade, handmade in Montana. <laughs> <laughs> um, so website the website showed two packet pickups, one in Lincoln, one in Omaha. How will where you're? You tell where you want to be. Okay. We'll ask you. Yeah, because I'll look right now. Yeah. And Omaha will be here. Yeah. Probably in this room. Yep. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, so we'll ask you again when we ask that kind of that closer to the race question, say, you know, how the training go, what do you estimate now? Because that will put you on the put you on the appropriate bus. You know, we don't want people to get cut off. You know, we're, we're out there to make sure that you guys are safe. So we have a cutoff time. We don't want anyone coming into Lincoln super late at night. What um, was your cutoff? I read seven it online, hours? but I don't remember. Seven? Eight, seven? It's but seven, you had a cutoff. Seven cut hours, pretty much. And then we have an intermediate cutoff time. That's what I was say. At, what was your? At Walton at 4.30. Oh, yes. Okay. But uh, it's basically 14-minute pace plus a little mm -hmm. buffer. So it's, I think it, people should be should be OK. We had, yeah. a, we had a question back here about uh, run running and walking. Mm -hmm. like. Uh, I know it's it's cool to it's cool to walk in uh, in ultras and in uh, asking like you know if there's a good strategy 15-3, 10-1, 5-1. Or and the crazy thing about this course, a lot of times you know you go to a hilly course and it's like okay I walk up the hills I run down them. You, you don't really get that option at this one. So I've had other people that said okay so when am I going to decide to walk on this one if it's all flat? So practice. Yeah, practice. And I mean it just comes down to what you think you. 
can handle and what kind of pace you want overall. I mean, if you want to do a 10 minute mile, are you gonna run for five minutes and then walk for two and those two minutes are gonna be slow enough that you're gonna have, you know, get five or 10 minutes for the mile? So I'm saying, and you wanna just stick to it from mile one. Don't say, okay, at mile 10, I'm gonna start doing your mile 20. Mile one, you know, if you have a watch that can beep at you or you can just, you know, always be looking at it. A lot of people say they love that because they have something to focus on other than the miles or the time they can go, okay, I, okay, great, I'm gonna walk for a couple one miles. Down. Yeah, one down. <laughs> <laughs> That, that was my question, whether yeah, you so should start, start right away. And uh, again, you talk to any of those people, talk to Mr. Giddings and ask him how many times he hasn't followed right. at the beginning and then pays for it. I mean, I've walked at mile 17 before in a marathon. It's hard to start back up. Yeah, it is. And that's, and that's <laughs> you, yeah, if you start at the very beginning of doing that and, and again, practice with it, because that's another thing. You don't want to think that, okay, I just know that when I'm in the altar, I'm going to walk, and then it comes to mile whatever, and you're like, I just got defeated because I'm walking. You shouldn't look at it like that at all. I mean, that should not be, yeah. walking is not a defeat at all in this in this event. So practice it. Be okay with saying, okay, this is part of my, and possibly learn to walk fast. I know I'm one, if I walk, it's a, okay, learn to get some walking speed in. Um, it's either run or stop. Um, but learn to do some quicker walking. And because it is different, walking is different than running. And most of you, if you know, if you go out there for a walk, I mean, I think it hurts to walk fast, you know? So work on it. Get on some of the different, um, surfaces and, and do that a little bit. The other thing I think is good, just valuable in any endurance sport is, you know, you're gonna have your A plan if things go great, uh, but if things don't go great, make sure you have a B plan so that if, if you're like, oh man, I feel terrible right now, like you at least have, okay, now I can do this. Yes. And, and so you're not just like, oh, what do I do now? I'm not feeling yeah. good. And make like, sure you have your food prepared for that too. Let's <laughs> say that you say, I'm gonna do this in, in four and a half hours and stuff goes wrong, so you only have food for four and a half hours, bad idea. It takes you six and you don't have that food. You know, make sure you have, you know, and that's why that, that aid station, or the drop bags is a really good thing to have. You may not need to stop and get it. You may not need to touch it at all, but have stuff there just in case. If it is hotter or if it is colder, you need to put more clothes on, you need to take something off. Um, that is a big thing that you may have to deal with. I think with, with food, it's good to, kind of plan on our aid stations as kind of those things that you don't expect that you'll want, want. rather than like a need. Yeah, yeah the a stuff need. that you know you're you're gonna want have it on you and then yeah. you'll get some like says you're probably not gonna be carrying potato chips on you but like that might sound pretty <laughs> <damn>. <laughs> <laughs> so you know you're gonna have your perpetuum or your your tablets and your your blocks all the stuff that we're not gonna have in our aid stations. Um, but you know we'll have some of those random things that just sound really good in the moment. But the other thing is, you know, just because there's a bag full of gummy bears it doesn't mean you want to you know, grab those and pull them down either for the summer. So yeah, yeah. Have your nutrition plan and stick to it. Yeah, that's exactly. Kind of have an idea of what you want. Don't go in there and just say, yeah, well, at every aid station that they have for me, I'm going to take whatever they give me. Again, practice with, and yeah, if they might, you know, they may have gummy bears out there. Practice with gummy bears, that's fine. That's a lot, I mean, that's a lot of stations, you know, but <clears throat> kind of know what kind of foods you want and it's going to work with you and stick to it. Don't try something brand new. Don't, yeah. And yeah. We're, we're, we're actually going to send out a list of what is all going to be at our aid awesome. stations, pretty, a pretty stock list so that you can maybe practice for a little bit with some of those things. All the stuff that we're getting is from Whole Foods, so it's going to be pretty uh pretty choice stuff it'll be it'll be good i think we assume sometimes too we're talking about food and nutrition but for those runners that are new or not as experienced please do not try new shoes new clothing new anything the day of the race make sure you're using something that you have used before because that's when people have issues usually yeah we always talk about i mean i know there's not an expo for this but you know you see it constantly people are like oh they're giving out this kind of samples let me try this why would you do that the day before so same thing with this don't save them try them later <laughs> save them try them later don't do it i mean watch it constantly same thing with shoes know that those shoes can make it you know it's not a time to break any it's shoes not, <laughs> not even two week old shoes no. i mean <clears throat> yeah yeah clothing really know and make sure again you have a couple different you know pairs of shorts a couple different just maybe in that drop <coughs> Again, if it's really, really hot, you may want to at mile 20 or whatever, you know, change change clothes, have a towel in that bag and, and change. Hats. I know it's on the relay, we change. Mm -hmm. Is the drop bag stuff going to be under a metallic shaded or is that going to be just out? Um, there will be a tent. 
There. Yeah. But not, not a very big one yet. It won't be cool. It won't have a <laughs> <laughs> plan on having a, a irrigation pump mister. So uh, those folks will be misting people if they choose to be misting. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, well, that's actually quite a bit of the trail. Shaded, it. it'll be shaded and then super blazing. Right, actually. Snow year was the year I did. But your stuff. Oh, seven months pregnant. Oh, is that what you wanted to say? I woke up yeah. that morning and I looked out the window and I went. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but oh. it'll probably be. But we'll have. Oh. Do you remember those? These guys were texting. So, anything else that we can field questions or any other things? And like they gave, I mean, you can contact us. Um, when you said about the, when you said about taking the like the salts and the sugars, you don't want to do that at the same time, right? Practice it. Practice it. I mean, that's the hard thing. Everybody's can't. different. I mean, yeah. It's, well, a lot of the people. Okay. No, go ahead. No, because you've done it. If a lot. you take goo packs, most of them have an electrolyte in it, so you're really so, yeah, you're, you're getting here. both at the same time, but not the same amount you get in one of the pills. Usually, here it's quicker to take that. But normally, if it's a goo pack or something, you'll be getting an electrolyte with with the sugar. I mean, you guys have, I mean, you guys have ran a lot. I mean, you know what you've used on marathons. And so, I mean, yes, it's, it's only five miles longer. I mean, it is, a, it is a long time, but it's, you don't have to go above and beyond craziness and just be prepared and in practice. Yeah, it's not, you're not doubling it, you know? So just practice some things, start minimal, you know, especially the good thing is, actually the good thing is that it is really hot right now, so we can, it sucks, but we can kind of train with that. So you go out there on a run, and like I said, I just added that I'd be at Zerinskin every seven miles, I'd take a, a tab, you know, and, you know, maybe next time I'll try more and see if it makes a difference, or if I'm sweating more, I and mean, that's what they'll tell you, the more you're sweating, the more you have to get that stuff in. So just start working with it. Don't go overboard if you guys have been good with what you've done, and, you know, you don't need to change it crazy, but add some stuff in there. I thought I would uh, say that they're kind of modest about saying come see them but I came to them about three months ago and had some pretty bad pains and they, they fixed me up and got me on the right path and they're really good about saying hey I know you want to run I know we bike let's figure out how we can do that and, and still work on you so I, I would say they're, they're really really good to go to if you guys are getting any pains <laughs> or feeling anything they understand uh, obviously they're all runners um, they, they understand kind of what we want, we desire to do, and what our bodies may be saying no, but, but they can get you on the right path. And I've come to them a few times, and it's been really helpful for me. So I know that it's not fashionable to say, or, or you know, keep your own horn, but they're, I think they're one of the best here in the state. So and I would definitely thing, recommend it. The one thing that we do love about our clinic is, um, Ben can attest to this 100%, is we, grab each other all the time. I mean, Ben probably had four people look at him because it's just like, okay, am I missing something? You know, so that's one of the greatest things about our clinic. And one thing that we do have, and you might have seen this, um, I guess a couple weeks ago, but we have the Alter G treadmill at our clinic. And our clinic is actually next door. It's in the OP medical building. What was called that? Mm -hmm. yeah. um, but it's an anti-gravity treadmill. So Let's say you're training and you find out uh, I'm getting you know, almost a, you know I'm getting a stress, stress response or a stress re you know stress stress fracture. You can put you on that sucker and you can run at 40 percent weight bearing and you're still running and you're still getting the neuromuscular benefits and you are um, not weight bearing. And we have a pool. The pool is another great place for training and it's not probably part of our aquatics. Yeah. So there's we a do, lot of things. Yeah, we do orthotics. We do actual running evaluations. Um, if you're actually injured, sometimes your insurance covers it, and not it's more cash based where we, you know, we do an over biomechanical evaluation and then we'll put you on the treadmill and videotape and then go through it with you at a slow pace so we can evaluate breakdown, you know, if you have issues, where it may be coming from, what you need to work on, that sort of thing. And again, the Wednesday nights, the third Wednesday of every month, big day to remember, so two weeks from tonight, 5.30 to 7 o'clock at Shields um, in the running department. We do free injury screens, okay? And it's also really good for shoes. If you're like, I don't know what kind of shoe I need, that's kind of the thing we do. So you come in, you have to tell you there may be a line. We've had 22 people in an hour and a half before. 
Um, but it's just kind of nice. One of those things, it's not for us to get business. It's for us to say, hey, you have an injury. We're worried about you. You need to go to the doctor. You're at the point that it's not just rest and ice or, you know, hey, we some, have some things at therapy. Let's try this and this. Um, or, you know what, you just need to rest a day and, and, and ice and you'll probably be fine. So it's just kind of a way for you to kind of know where to go next. And then shoes to kind of get an idea. We really like it there because we can say you're a, you know, mild stability type person. They'll go and get us five, six, literally seven pairs of shoes and then you try them on. Um, and that night we usually offer $10 off, $10 off of, your of your shoes if they're not sale shoes. So kind of a nice thing to have out there. And then, but we are available um, for whatever questions you have <coughs> at all times. Let's see. Um, who has done 